Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Necronomicast. My name is Brian, and we are going to depart from the horror of Hollywood and venture out into the beyond. Our guest tonight is Mr. Josh Hurd. Josh is a paranormal investigator. He's a documentary filmmaker. He's an author and podcast host. Josh also has the distinction of being the main historian and co-owner of the Malvern Manor. We're going to listen to the story, the history of the Malvern Manor, which happens to be one of the creepiest and most haunted locations in the heartland. So, at this time, I ask you to dim the lights, relax, as we discuss all things paranormal with Josh Hurd on the Necronomicast. Under a blanket of stars, another late night conversation with somebody in the paranormal industry or in the paranormal world. I'm joined here in the haunted heartland with Mr. Josh Hurd. What is up, sir? How are you? <laughs> Good, man. How are you? I'm doing fine, man. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, you're just uh, kind of a, like a renaissance man almost in, in the paranormal world. I, and I hate to box <laughs> in and just say in the paranormal world, but we'll talk about uh, your life and experiences with the paranormal, how you, how you came onto the, uh, the Malvern Manor. We'll talk about all the th- kinds of things you got going on. But for those that haven't heard of you or are familiar with you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, my name is Josh Hurd. I'm a paranormal author, lecturer, uh, investigator, filmmaker, uh, all this fun stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, also, you know, co-owner of this really cool building in Malvern, Iowa that we call Malvern Manor. Uh, that And that stuff usually keeps me pretty busy i'm also a musician as well like kind of on the side and on the weekends you know <laughs> that fun stuff but yeah man i stay busy what drew you or what were your kind of earliest experiences uh that kind of piqued your interest in the paranormal you know i guess i was always kind of like that weird kid in school <laughs> like um i remember going to the library and like as the class you know the whole class would go to the library and all my buddies would be like getting these books on like, I mean, they were getting like the Berenstain bears, you know, and things like that. And I'm like, okay, that's lame. You know, I don't want to, I don't (laughs) care about the Berenstain bears. I remember like getting those books. um, I think they were called like scary stories to tell in the dark, you know, and things of that nature. And I mean, man, I remember like reading these stories and just getting creeped out, like thoroughly creeped out. I'm like, this is so delicious. And so, I, uh, I mean, that was kind of what initially, you know, drew me into the kind of the weird, you know, the world of the weird, I guess. But, uh, you know, it wasn't until I was about 12 years old, you know, I lost an uncle. Uh, you know, he was only 31 when he passed away. He was quite young. Um, and so this was, you know, a fairly big shock, you know, to the family. Um, but it was very odd happenings surrounding his death and and the funeral and just a few days after that that really uh got me scratching my head got me kind of asking the bigger questions you know in life which at at 12 years old you know like that's kind of a, a terrifying thing you know you're just now finally coming to terms with the finality of, of death and you know i was quite close with my uncle and trying to cope with the fact that you know, he's gone. And, you know, having these experiences um, really kind of led me then to, you know, the works of like Hans Holzer, uh, sure. and Lorraine Warren, you know, things like that. But like really diving into like even parapsychological research and things like this, which at 12 years old, man, like it's super weird. I understand that. Um, and I kind of kept it all under my hat, honestly, you know, until I was in college and I found some like-minded individuals, you know, I got out of small town, Iowa, and, uh, found some other people who were into this creepy stuff. <laughs> we have similar, um, 
backgrounds when i was a kid like you, you mentioned like you know berenstain bears like yeah I, I was really i was really attracted to, like these books like um books about bigfoot um books about yes. um you know the loch ness monster uh, yes. and then and then do you remember the orange and black crestwood house or crestwood monster books oh absolutely yeah man those were my absolutely <laughs> those were my favorite books when i was growing oh, up oh my so, gosh man you know and then we were talking about your uncle you know my dad passed away when I was 15. And so at a kind of a young age, you know, and he was, he was an older guy. Uh, sure. Yeah. You know, you're faced with, uh, at a young age, this finality, uh, of death and, um, um, mortality and everything. So right. really, so I, I totally appreciate what you were saying, um, about that because it, it resonates with me. That's kind of my background. And I mean, it's just, it is kind of a weird thought, you know, like um, having somebody that is so central in, in your life just kind of be taken away like that. Um, yeah, it's it sucks. It's terrible. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think that is what what kind of started me on this path. That's for sure. So how do you go from there to being a, a co-owner of this Malvern Manor? And for those that aren't <laughs> familiar um, with the Malvern Manor, I first heard about it on Darkness Radio. I think um, you guys were talking. Were you on Darkness Radio? Was that the show? I did. Yeah, yeah. I did uh, Darkness Radio. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, "Gosh, I can't believe this place is so close to Omaha, the River City." Um, tell us a little bit about the manor, and then let's go into how you became caretaker and co-owner. So, like, you know, the manor itself is an interesting structure you know it's it's ten thousand square feet um so there's a lot of ground to cover in it um and we know it was built uh, in the mid 1800s and then by the late 1800s the place was in, in full swing as a as a hotel and uh kind of like the the pinnacle of the area you know it was really the place to be um for travelers and all of that and so primarily it's servicing the railroad um it ran as a hotel all the way up until 19, uh, the 1950s. Hmm. Oh, so it had a really good run. Um, now, obviously, it was going through owners like water. You know what I mean? Like nobody seemed to hang on to it for long. It was almost as if they were, you know, uh, wagering it in a, in a poker game or something. But uh, <laughs> it's it right. kind of funny <laughs> when you go back and look at some of the history. Um, but we know like in the 1950s, it kind of takes an odd turn. It becomes... Uh, what we would consider to be like a nursing home. Um, and, you know, there was a new section of building that was put on in 1956 that we call the nursing home wing, mm -hmm. um, which kind of suggests a more medical atmosphere once you're back in there. I mean, there's wider door frames, a lot of laminate type flooring, things of that nature, um, med cabinets and all that fun stuff. Um, now, we know it, it didn't really last that long. In the 1970s, the state of Iowa came in, shut them down because the hallways weren't wide enough to properly transport patients. Um, and so this is where it becomes what I call the group home. And, and the group home is servicing any type of mental disorder you could possibly imagine. Uh, things that we see every day, you know, people with Down syndrome, people with drug and alcohol abuse, but very common uh, type things uh, to the opposite side of the coin. You have people with uh, DID or multiple personalities as it used to be referred to as, uh, you know, schizophrenics, even murderers are housed here. Like this is a very eclectic group and population of people kind of coexisting together uh, under the same roof for sure. Uh, and we know it ran that way all the way up until it's closing in 2005. Amazing. Yeah. I've spent the night, in the place. Yes. And, and yes. it's, uh, with, uh, Coho Zip and Doug and our friend Harlan, our little paranormal team. And when yeah. you say I, it, the place is enormous, I was like, wow, we get the whole run of this place. It's huge. Yeah. And you can kind of feel like an old timey kind of West, uh, kind yes. of, a feel, you know, like when you're talking <laughs> yes. about, uh, you know, the, it's days of being, uh, kind of the hub when the railroad kind of came through. Like that, that, that first room, the captain's room that we were in, 
And then, oh yeah. Yeah. That's got a great vibe. And then you, uh, like you can kind of go through the places or the, the different sections of the building. And there is, uh, you can tell like where they kind of, well, we're going to add on an addition here. We're going to put on a yeah. wing here because it, because it's all, it's, it's the way it's constructed. It, it, you can, you can tell like, well, this is totally 100% it's different. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Yes. It's a, it I, is so weird. And I, and it took the first at least hour that we were in there, uh, to kind of find our way around, you know, yeah. cause, cause stairways go here and then you go down this hallway and then, what, what, wait, <laughs> then I get turned around and whose room is this? And right. Yeah. So it's got a weird history, man. And what that kind of lends itself to kind of the energy and the, the happenings and the phenomenon that are, that people are experiencing there. Uh, yeah. Cause it's eclectic. It's weird. It's, it's got a weird vibe with the different, um, I guess, eras that it's had and exactly. the, and the yes. different people that have stayed under that roof. Can you tell us a little bit about, I kind of mentioned the captain's room. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about maybe the personalities that um, kind of present themselves or, or people? Sure. Are, yeah. So, and I will say, yeah, uh, who we affectionately, you know, refer to as the captain um, is, you know, Captain Kohler's. He was, um, you know, really one of the first people to come to the area and like settle, you know, build a family, a life and put down roots. And we know like, uh, he was obviously one of the original owners of that uh, building itself, um, but very strong ties, it would seem, to the place. Um, I will say I, I'm fairly confident that that he's not too cool with what we're doing. <laughs> I will say that. Like, he is kind of a uh, a grumpy guy. That is for sure. Um, especially when, when provoked, when pushed uh, in any way. Um, you know, some of the other you know, what I call resident spirits, right? Um, you know, Gracie is one of my favorites. Um, now Gracie was definitely one of the exotic type of patients, but she was multiple personalities. She was schizophrenic on top of that. Um, they would hear like male voices coming from her room. Yeah. Um, they, they would have to go check it out and they would see, um, it's just her, you know, <laughs> like she could uh, manipulate her voice to sound male, which is, is fascinating. You know, just given the, the night and day differences between male and female vocal cords, even um, one evening in particular, we know three nurses came and sat with Gracie for an hour and within the hour documented 13 separate distinguishable personalities, which is almost medically unheard of. Like the wheelhouse is two to five, you know, right. And so for her to have 13, it's like, oh, my goodness, like I can't imagine uh, being in her shoes, you know, uh, and, and living with that type of mindset, you know, just fascinates me. Now her in particular, um, her in particular, what era was she living there? Was she living there? Like, like, like you said, with the, um, the addicted, um, yes. So this yeah. would have been like in the nineties is okay. when she was there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we do have an interesting kind of, and this is definitely one of the more, uh, unsolved mystery type cases that we have, but uh, uh, the little child spirit that we call Inez. And we know there was a 12 uh, year old girl in 1900. It was December 21st of 1900. And uh, we know 12 year old Inez Gibson was outside playing with her uh, eight year old brother Otto. And she was either cold or bored, but she says, you know, I'm going upstairs. And we know 10 minutes pass, Otto comes upstairs and he finds his sister Inez hanging by her jump rope in the closet. Like this kind of looks like a, a suicide. It kind of smells like a suicide. Like these kids had had a very rough go of life up until this point. Um, you know, uh, mom and dad split. Uh, neither one was uh, able to really care for the children. And so they had come up and they were living now with aunt and uncle uh, Aunt and uncle were also grocers in town. And that's what Otto did. He tried to get his sister down after finding her uh, and he couldn't get her down because he's just not strong enough. And he runs to uh, runs to the grocery store to get aunt and uncle who are now, you know, adopted mom and dad. He grabs them. He grabs two doctors as well, uh, which seems like just dumb luck for small town, Iowa in 1900. Um, <laughs> but they race back, they get her down. They try to help her. 
uh, but there was just no helping her. Um, too much time had passed, you know. Um, like this story shook the entire community. Uh, even one of the doctors that was trying to assist her ends up committing suicide 10 days later. Uh, like the story gets so messy. Um, but what we also know is that, you know, Inez Gibson or a spirit claiming to be Inez Gibson is one of the most active that we have in the manor. Um, but what we also know is that Inez Gibson never died on property. She never died on our property. She died, in fact, just about a block away where the, the medical clinic in Malvern sits right now. That is actually where their house used to stand. Um, so, I mean, just about a block away or so, but definitely not on our property. So why she would be there, I, I don't know. Um, it's one of these interesting stories that I love to entertain, you know, <laughs> like, um, you know, in 1900, the building was kind of the place to be, as we mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, so maybe she was just attracted to the location or, you know, other teams have come in and said, oh, it's something like a trickster, something maybe demonic in nature. Um, but nothing really malicious has happened to, to suggest that any further. So I don't know what to really make of her yet. Yeah, well, I just wonder what's, what's with, um, you know, and I talked to Johnny Hauser about this too. Like you got, oh, yeah. you got Velisca, you've got, uh, uh, the, the Maxwell, uh, farm, uh, the schoolhouse in Farrar yes. uh, or Farrar schoolhouse in Maxwell, Iowa, yeah. uh, the squirrel cage jail. You, you have all these, I mean, there's, there's all <laughs> in Malvern Manor. You have all these places in Iowa. What right. is, what is it with Iowa? What is going on with what's, Iowa? Right. That's crazy. Uh, Back to the like um, the captain a little bit. When he had the place, and it was now was there like uh, drinking? Was there was there uh, gambling? Was there was there you know like, was it a, it was a hotel at first, right? Is that what Correct. I mean, and it was it, all of the above, really. In that first room that you come to, really inside the manor, it's a very large you know wooden room mm -hmm. uh, with a very tall ceiling. That also you know that was where they would come and check in, you know, for the, the night, the week, the month in some cases, but that room also doubled kind of as the, the gentleman's parlor, right? So they would sure. sit around and they would, they would sip their whiskey. They would smoke their stogies, absolutely play cards, um, things like that to pass the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, like I love that room yeah. just because of the history that it, it has seen, you know? Right. I was just going to say the energy that's been in that room and all throughout the place, it's just different uh, mixtures of energy. Like, uh, like, yeah. like I said, you know, there's probably a lot of gambling, a lot of, a lot of, uh, tempers flared, a lot of, um, yes. flandering probably with local yeah, ladies, absolutely. local yes. ladies or traveling yes. ladies. There's just all kinds of, um, good and bad vibes that have kind of saturated down to the studs of the building. And then you, you, yeah. you, you renovate and you build on, uh, this nursing home, uh, right. you know, the whole mixture of the, uh, the, the wide variety of what people were diagnosed with living under the same roof. Dude, yeah. It's unheard of these days. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. When we took, when we took the, when, when we took the tour with you and you're explaining this, I'm like, how is this, how is this even, right. how, exactly. how is this even possible that this, uh, I mean, no wonder it's kind of a, a favorite of investigators and why it's kind of known as a paranormal hotspot. Sure. Sure. And I mean, that's another thing. Is it just kind of like very similar to, to their personalities? The the activity that you are going to get, you know, it, it kind of runs the gamut. You know, there are you know, different shadow figures and things like that that people are seeing. There are, you know, physical manipulation of objects and, and people. <laughs> you know, there's uh, very odd, you know, disembodied uh, voices and noises that you'll hear. It's just bizarre. The whole building, it, and that's ultimately what, why I fell in love with the place. I couldn't stop. I couldn't get enough of the place, really. So what? Um, when I first found it, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll talk about when you first found it. Like, what? How does? Uh, how does one come? <laughs> I mean, you didn't win it in a card game, you know, against the captain. Like, how did you guys become uh, owners and and stumble upon it? You know, it does kind of feel like I did, though. <laughs> like, it is very <laughs> odd. Like, it is so odd. Um, so, I was filming my first documentary film. And we were across the street at the Classic Cafe in Malvern, Iowa. 
which has its own slew of paranormal happenings. They were nice enough to say, yeah, come on over and, and film for the purpose of your documentary. Awesome. So I go and, and I, I didn't realize, oh, there's, there's a bar that's attached to this place and it's a Friday night. And, uh, uh apparently it had been a rough week for the, for the patrons because man, yeah. they were loud. <laughs> and so there was absolutely no way that we could, you know, do a, an investigation with noise contamination and all that stuff. So it was a wild night in Malvern. Boy, it really was. <laughs> so, and that's just kind of my luck anyway. Right. So, I uh, I go outside and I am uh, smoking what I call my angry cigarette, just kind of uh, trying to come up with a plan B. And there's this gentleman outside and he's like, hey, dude, what's up with all the cameras? So I'm like, oh. so I'm like, this is where I uh, lose a lot of people. right? So I'm, uh, I'm like, well, he's either going to think this is really cool or think that I am absolutely off my rocker. Right. Um, so I told him and he's like, Oh, that's kind of cool. He's like, you know, I got this building and, uh, he, he basically did a brief little run through of the history. Um, and he's like, you know, some odd things happen. I don't really believe in this stuff. Um, but there are some odd things that happen in there that I can't really explain. Um, and after he told me everything about the building, you know, I was like, man, this sounds too good to be true. Right. So I'm like, where is this place? And he was like, oh, it's just right there across the street. <laughs> I was like, OK, pal. I'm like, I think we just became best friends. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, this is great. Yeah, Talk about so, it totally just falling in your lap. Right. Yes, exactly. And so like he was nice enough to then be like, yeah, come on over and you know, bring the cameras, do your thing. I'm like, wow. OK, so he just saved it, you know, saved night one of filming. Um, which I thought was complete just garbage and trashed at that point. Um, and so we had gone in there, um, did a couple like experiments. We had experienced more in the first two hours of being inside of this building than we had in the last two years. Um, it was that intense. And what's interesting about it is like watching the first film, which is, you know, called a brush with evil watching that the first 10 minutes of that documentary is quite literally us stumbling upon this building that we are going to eventually then call Malvern Manor, which is mind boggling to me still, um, to this day. And so, you know, I talked to this gentleman and I was like, look, I don't think you realize what you have here. <laughs> you know, um, and like, it was to the point where I would just call him up. It would be like a Wednesday night and I'd be like, Hey man, do you think I can cruise over to the house for a little bit? And he's like, yeah, sure. You know where the key's at. So I'd <laughs> run him, I'd run him like a, you know, I'd like, I'd run him like a hundred bucks. I'd be like, thanks so much. You know, like I appreciate it, but it, you know, there's no heat, no running water, no anything in the building. And so I'm like, most of the time I was only there for like maybe an hour uh -huh. or two. Right. So I'm like, God, I'm like, you know, don't tell my wife that I'm like spending this kind of money. Just like, <laughs> yeah, she thinks she thinks you're over in Council Bluffs at the boats or something, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and that probably would have been better, you know. Um, but man, like he ends up, he ends up, uh, you know, kind of listening to what I had to say and agreed to like open the doors, mm. you know, to the public. And man, I was like, this is going to be the the easiest money you've ever made in your life because quite literally, people would come, they would. I would check them in. I would collect their money and I would run it right next door where he lived. And I'm like, there you go, bro. Like, see you later. Well, he calls me one day and he was like, um, I got a job offer and it's out of town and I got to leave. Uh, but I'm selling my house. I'm selling the manor. I'm selling everything. And I'm like, okay, hold on. I was like, just give me like three weeks. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. Chill out for a second. And we were lucky enough to to kind of swoop in there and get the building to keep it doing what it's doing. So yeah. That's incredible. Now you mentioned the one cafe that you were gonna go investigate. Just for the people uh that are gonna visit Malvern and stay overnight, what's the name of the other cafe as well? So there is <clears throat> excuse me, there's the classic cafe, which is just across the street. Yeah. And then right quite literally, right in the front yard yes. of Malvern Manor is a little mom and pop diner um called CNMs. Yes. And 
that place is divine. Like all of these, the, the places to eat in Malvern are are phenomenal. The only reason um, I'm so, sorry, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, <laughs> no, I was just going to say like, it's to the point where I've literally put up uh, the menus for these different places to eat in Malvern. You know, I've put them up in the manor so people can, uh, they can go to these places, you know, and see what they want to get uh, before they even walk in the door, you know. <laughs> so. Well, what's what's funny is like when when we stayed at Velisca and uh, we stayed there twice. I've been there three times, but we stayed overnight twice. Yeah, uh, we ate at TK's in. Uh, Oh, yes. Velisca. So like Johnny Hauser and I, uh, on when I interviewed him on the show, we talked about how great their pork loin sandwiches were. But no, th- that, re- that restaurant, after a night of like paranormal investigation, there's nothing better than to go into these like mom and pop places, have a cup of coffee with the locals. Oh, yeah. And then have yes. a, have a, have like a kick-ass breakfast. I, they're not yeah. sponsors to the show, so I'm not going to be talking about them too much. But when in Malvern. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Eat, eat over there. Definitely so, hit them up, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how cool that that you got the place now. Now you're um, a co-owner. So is um, I didn't meet the other owners. That uh, you're a co-owner. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. So uh, is, uh, chief chief cook and bottle washer. I got kind of what I call myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, is your co-owner? Do they uh, do they just buy it kind of like for um, investment, or are they into the paranormal as well? Oh, they're um, very much into the paranormal. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And they had they had um, visited us a few different times, um, and you know they were the first people I really reached out to, saying, "Man, like, I don't I don't know what's going to happen with this place, you know." And I, you know, I just kind of wanted to keep them in the loop or whatever. Um, and they're like, "Yeah, hang on, we're going to make something happen," you know. <laughs> and sure enough, it it did. Well, also, so here we are. I appreciate your role as caretaker of the place too, because you give a real detailed, thorough tour of the place. Sometimes people just hand you the keys and say, "Well, we'll see in the morning." But you, like, you walk right. through every part, and you talked about the history of the town. I appreciated the fact that the place was, um, you know, it, it had um, a different beginning than how it ended. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, all the different personalities in there. Now, we talked about Inez. We talked about Gracie. We talked about the captain. What one? dynamic that i found was really interesting when we when and when we were there we tried to contact or um see if we can hear anything from there there was two gentlemen up in a hallway that had yes um, uh, adjacent rooms can you tell us a little bit about that that yeah so you know one of the first things that i did you know after we acquired the building for ourselves was we had the former nursing staff you know, kind of meet us there, those that were willing (laughs) and walk us through the building, just kind of walk me down memory lane. Right. And, and tell me what you remember, which I love history anyway, and hearing these stories and standing where these stories actually took place is phenomenal for a, a weird nerd kid like myself. And they told me a pretty interesting story. What they said was that the gentleman in room 18 pretty much had the bed check scheduled down to a science and and three to four times a week, he would sneak across the hall into room 17 where he would uh, you know, sexually assault the gentleman that was in that room. Now, personally, I've seen over 150 pieces of documentation that would suggest very similar things were in fact happening. However, it always rubbed me the wrong way just because 150 is a lot. <laughs> and I mean, in a case like that, four is a lot. Um, yeah. And I, I would suggest that if you knew something like that were happening, it could potentially happen one or two times. And then you would most likely take one of these gentlemen out of the equation, but that never happened. I can also tell you that they coexisted for at least five years across the hall from one another from the scope that I can see. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not making much sense to me at all. Um, we had, uh, an event with, it was Dustin Perry and KJ McCormick from the show ghost hunters. Um, we were doing, uh, uh, quick little, um, EVP sessions in the, the rooms 
and asking very specific questions about, you know, uh, the, the assault and plain as day, uh, you know, the voice that comes over is, you know, that never happened. <laughs> and, yeah. um, it, it was very adamant about the fact that no, this never happened. So obviously I, uh, you know, we all kind of perked up and I was like, well, what did happen? He said, I loved him now over the next gosh, two hours. Now he said, say that again, what, what you heard and you heard it clear as day. He said, I loved him. I loved him. I loved him. Yep. And this spirit suggested over the next two hours that these two were in fact a couple. They loved each other very much. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to make of the documentation other than the fact that I know any form of sexual anything has to be documented, no matter what it is, which may then lend itself to why we would have this documentation, but also maybe lend itself to why they were never separated. Um, because maybe it wasn't an actual issue, um, but you got to put something down right. on paper. And I also know this was, you know, this was more in the early, early and mid nineties, uh, you know, where this was just now becoming more socially acceptable. But, um, but still, I mean, it's slower, you know, the wheel um, turns slower in the Midwest a little bit. Very much so. Yeah. And that's another thing that I would suggest as well. Absolutely. But yeah, man, um, phenomenal stuff. Like when you can, you know, hear a story like that and you're like, gosh, you know, this just, it's just not jiving with me at all. Um, and then to get EVPs like that, just almost like real time responses, like, no, dude, you're telling this story all wrong. You know, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and what I what I appreciate about that there's the there's the human factor of 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 what was going on there at the time, but and right. then also the paranormal, like you said, the real time intelligent responses to your questions that kind of refute the story and tells what probably yeah. could be you know construed as the real story. It's that's what it's it's just yeah. what I, I'm glad you shared that because that's a real unique. Um, a thing about the Malvern Manor. I mean, when you investigate different places, you know, there's the horrific tragedy of Velisca. You know, eight people right. murdered in one night, and the the Dude. creepiness of the uh, of the covering the mirrors and stuff like that. But when you get right, you know, that's a, the Malvern Manor's got all these different kinds of um, human interest, interesting, um, uh, and at the same time bizarre <laughs> dude yes <laughs> very bizarre. i mean we went up and 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 let's get what's what's the what's the website because this place is totally available for investigations um if people want to spend the night and do an overnight sure. investigation what's the website people need to go to if they go to the malvern um there is a a calendar right there um that they can um they can click a date they can request that date um you know, you can see what's already taken or whatever, and you can request a date that's open. It emails me directly. Um, so, I mean, when you do book a book, the place you're uh, dealing with me. Um, but yeah, man, and then we get you on the calendar, we get you going. Yeah. So and like, and like great. I said, what I, repl what I appreciate about uh, your place and, and you, when we got there, just it sounds dumb, but from a customer service standpoint, when you go there, you get the tour you get your questions answered. Yeah, it was just a, it was a great time. We had we had a real uh, interesting uh, long evening um, investigating yeah. the place. And like I said, it's it's huge. I mean, you can spend an hour in here. You can spend an hour down this <laughs> yeah. hallway. And, and right. we did not see this uh, phenomenon, but the shadow man. What's what's the shadow? Oh man? my gosh, man! Well, first of all, I appreciate you saying all that stuff. It was very nice of you. Um, but yeah, like the the shadow man phenomenon is ridiculous and this is what's going to send the majority of people out the front door um myself included like not lying um, but uh you know that all the way down this really long dark hall uh in what we call the nursing home wing uh is room number two and a very tall uh, black humanoid figure comes out of room two he will turn and run at people. Um, this is not a, I mean, it's a very unnatural movement. 
it's not like a typical running gait or anything like that. And this is uh, traveling the distance of, I would say, 30 to 35 feet in, in less than a second. So um, now what's interesting to me anyway um, is – the second you you flinch or you know duck and cover and scream or what have you, um, you know, the phenomenon's passed. It's done and over with. Nobody is getting hit or scratched or, or any of that junk. None of that is happening. Um, I think it's just seeing something moving that fast uh, towards you is definitely enough to to jar you. Um, now it was the day after paranormal lockdown aired on TLC. Um, one of these nurses that I've since befriended, you know, she said, you're never going to believe this. And I was like, yeah, try me. Right. But she yeah. said, in, <laughs> in, right. she said, you know, in room two, the gentleman that occupied that room was six foot seven. He was nonverbal, uh, mentally deranged. He had killed a few people in the past. Um, now, his little claim to fame, though, was whenever they were doing like bed checks or, or rounds or what have you, he would come out of the room and he would chase whichever member of the nursing staff was doing the documentation. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, my God, like, that right there fascinated me because we're seeing very similar behaviors here. Um, it, it almost suggests, you know, something residual uh, in nature, but... You know, the problem with it is usually with a residual type of haunt, there's an antecedent, something to, to kick it into motion. Um, sure, like a date, something be, happened. Yeah, or, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a time of day, a, a weather pattern, a moon phase. Like, we are trying literally everything that we can and coming up completely empty-handed, which is quite frustrating. Um, but uh, we don't know why this is happening. Um, this has been known to happen as often as four times in a day. Um, the last time that this happened was three days ago and it was seven 30 in the morning. So I have no idea like what the significance was with seven 30 in the morning. Must've been bed check time or something like wake dude, up. It's time for breakfast, dude. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Right. It's like, come on. Chow time. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's such an eclectic group of uh, personalities that are that are said to still inhabit the uh, the halls of Malvern, the Malvern Manor dot com. So yeah. now earlier you were talking about uh, you were filming your documentary, A Brush with Evil. Um, yes, I know you've made three of them. The, the 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 third one, the final chapter, just debuted at the Omaha Hauntacon. Yes. Now you've also. I was just kind of looking through the titles of your shows or your movies into the light patience oh, into dude, the light yes. too, interconnected. Now, if you subscribe to Amazon prime, I see a lot of those are, are you're able to watch them on Amazon prime. <laughs> yeah, they're right there. So, you know, let's, let's talk about your films. What, what started you, you know, getting the bug in to start making movies? You know, I never really had any aspirations to tell you the truth to do that. I wrote, um, I had written a couple books at that time and, uh, maybe we should start talking about your books I and mean, you've written, well, and, yeah, I've written six, I've written six books. Um, and now, you know, up to, up to 15 documentary films, like it's crazy. How many, are um, you, how many have you made? 15, oh. 15 different films, um, that I've either made or been a part of. Um, but yeah, like writing the books, you know, like I'm not a writer at all. Well, <laughs> so, wait, like, wait, wait a minute you're not a writer but you've written how many books right so i mean <laughs> it, this was more of i've like, written i'm not you know many, like you know how many books i've written how many zero <laughs> you're like goose I'm, egg. I'm not a writer <laughs> dude no <laughs> by definition like, i'm not a writer it's so crazy though like I, I don't know like writing was a lot of fun for me you know and i didn't think it necessarily would be uh but then i was approached to kind of turn that first book which the first book that i wrote is called when ghost hunting goes wrong a brush with evil yeah and so then i was approached to make this film and i was like okay cool um that was definitely my introduction you know into this whole filmmaking world and then i definitely got the itch after that i was 
hooked and it was everything it was the the tech and and the filming process and then it was you know the the editing process and all of that like oh my gosh man i fell in love with all of this stuff um and so it's you know it's definitely a labor of love that's for sure <laughs> but uh um yeah i guess i just haven't stopped yet <laughs> so. yeah let me ask you this though you, you said your first your first book was called when ghost hunting goes wrong how does when does ghost hunting go wrong oh lord um so i was <laughs> i was very you know again like when i went to college and i found that like-minded group of uh, individuals who wanted to do this stuff and it, i was attending northwest missouri state a university in maryville missouri sure and um you know around halloween time you know schools in full swing now but right around the halloween season is when you're going to get the most press about, you know, spooky locations. Yeah. Um, and so there was this really cool article that I read in the paper in this place. It was called Workman's Chapel. And Workman's Chapel is a, it's an old, it's an old church. Uh, it fell into disuse in the 1950s. Um, I mean, it looks like a barn. It looks like an old barn with, uh, you've got three windows on each side. You have two windows in the back and you have a very large opening in the front, but very similar to like a barn. Um, and it's just one single room. That's it. Um, but now, I mean, the place is falling apart. There's graffiti all over the walls. You know, there's all sorts of weird stuff just everywhere. Um, you know, um, beer bottles and you know, <laughs> broken glass. It's not a very inviting place. I'll say that, but you know, we had, we had an, went out there four consecutive nights. And the first three nights, nothing really significant was happening. There was bumps and, and, and creaks and knocks and things like that, but nothing really to, you know, write home about. Um, the fourth night is when we bit off way more than we could potentially chew. And, you know, it, it ultimately uh, took the work of a priest uh, to, to, to rectify this whole situation. That was kind of, for me, um, kind of the eye opening moment, right? Was, was the, this a, was this a Roman Catholic priest? What's that now? Uh, this, no, actually it was not. A Roman Catholic priest. This was a, a gentleman uh, that I had got to know because um, I also attended a, a school uh, called Iowa Western in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And while there, um, one of my instructor's husbands was um, worked for a church in, in Omaha, and that was his job. His job, and this fascinated me anyway, but his entire job was quite literally to help anybody that was in a very odd situation such as this, something that we would, I hate to say the word like demonic, right? Because it's thrown around so often. Um, but that was his job. Um, demonologist, whatever you want to call it, exorcist, mm. whatever you want to call it. Um, and so he was the guy that I called uh, wow. to, to help in this situation for sure. But yeah, man, I mean, after that, you know, that, that's the only reason I wrote the book, right? Because I was still, I was still waking up in the middle of the night with like really bad dreams all surrounding that one happening, you know, it was almost like paranormal PTSD, right? Sure. Um, was this, so I, was this the location that's uh, featured in Brush With Evil number one? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And so, you know, that was why like. I wrote that book just more or less as like a therapy session, mm. you know, I'm like, I'm just going to put it out there and just whatever. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, here comes the dang movies. <laughs> you know, like, So that was, that was it for me. That's for sure. One of your books is entitled ghosts in the Bible. Yes. Oh my gosh, man. That, that, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> that was fun to write. Um, you know, while I was in college and even now, even to this day, you know, I get a lot of people that come up to me and, and they'll say things like, you know, cause I consider myself to be a Christian. Sure. Yeah. Um, I believe in God and all of that. Um, 
but people are like, well, how can you believe in God and still do this? I'm like, what? Like, how can you call yourself a Christian, you know, and, and do this? You're doing the devil's work and all that. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't call myself anything. I am like, I am a Christian, you know, I am what I am. Um, but it is interesting, like how people kind of view what we do. They think that we're out like conjuring the devil and all of this one. In reality, all we're doing is really just searching for answers that nobody has the uh, the real answer to, you know? Um, yeah. So it's fascinating stuff. And so I wanted to write that book as kind of a, uh, just kind of a, a know your role and, and shut your mouth <laughs> type of thing, <laughs> you know? Like, damn it, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because uh, I'm, I'm Roman Catholic and... Sure. Uh, you know there is there is church the church frowns upon uh, like necromancy like like correct con, yes you know conversations with the dead well I've never had a conversation uh, like a back and forth like a dialogue right. with the that dead that would be so, great though. so I <laughs> well but then you know at the same time though you even earlier in this conversation you were talking about like is this a trickster you know things like yes. that so so there, yes. there's a, there's a definite like um while this is for me very fascinating and i love these late night conversations and what it implies with you know the afterlife and answers and things like that i do acknowledge and i think it's totally totally acceptable to acknowledge that there are dark forces out there that might yeah. You know, uh, you, you said something like, like, I think it was with Inez, you know, you said like, or something that identifies right. as exactly. Inez. So, yeah. Something that makes you want to think you're addressing a 12 year old girl, right? But, yeah. It's uh, a because... lot, it's a lot like the parallels of the internet. Well, yeah, I was on the, yes. I was, I was in this chat room with a beautiful 28 year old girl from Sweden, but it's probably some <laughs> right. guy from Jersey, right. <laughs> it's some dude from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> sitting in mom and dad's basement and <laughs> eating a hoagie sandwich with his belly hanging out right like just you know what I mean? oh yeah. i just i just finished yoga well no you did it you were no you didn't <laughs> but did you but did you but did you <laughs> right so that's what's so oh that's God. what's crazy about the paranormal i mean it's so intriguing but at the same time like i've got a little yeah. bit of caution there too so um now all your all all your your books are they i mean they're all available. Now you personally have a website. Yes, I do. Um, it's, it's just Josh Uh, quite simple. Um, but yeah, so on there you can find, um, the, the books, the, the films. Uh, I mean, I even have like a, a Patreon page that's set up where I do like live feeds from Malvern Manor and all this other weird stuff. That, um, that I'd rather just keep off of Facebook, you know. <laughs> but at the same All time, but at the same time, on Facebook, on your on the Malvern page, every every once in a while, I'm scrolling every through. Yeah, you'll have like a live video feed. So I think I think it'd be for our Necronomicast listeners. You should go to Facebook, like the Malvern Manor, uh, yeah. and and follow the updates and things like that. Because you never know when there's going to be like Josh setting up a camera and let's see if we see something. Right. And I tell you, like, even just last night, man, like, there was so much stuff going on just with the live feed that we did. It was ridiculous. And I love this stuff, you know? It's it's to the point where I'm sitting at home and I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I need to be there. Like, <laughs> I need to go back. And then my wife just looks at me like, are you crazy? Like, don't. Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you? Whatever. Well, if you're going to do that, take out the trash, too, Josh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so okay, while so you're up. <laughs> we're throwing a lot of information at the people. We've got the malvernmanor.com. We've got uh Josh Heard, like I heard you. Josh Heard.net. Yep. Uh now you'd mentioned what what's pan, pan Pantheon? What's it? Pantheon? What's the Oh word? Patreon. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. What's all that about? So Patreon is kind of a cool website where basically um you know, you sign up. Um, and so what I do on Patreon is, and it's, it's $3 and it's $3 for a month. And f with this month, it's all inclusive. You get everything that I'm putting out for that month and everything that I've put out since the beginning of the page. Um, but it's blogs. There are the vlogs and there are, uh, podcasts that I do. Um, I just had like, 
uh, Dustin Perry from Ghost Hunters joined me on a podcast I just did last, no, it was two nights ago. Uh, we had Brandy Green from Ghost Hunters International that was on there. Yeah, she's um, great. I, I she met isn't her. Isn't she a great? Yeah. I met her at, um, uh, uh, introduced her at Hauntacon and yes. she was on Ghost Hunters International. Yeah, she's great. She is such a cool person. Um, and so, yeah, like all these, uh, fun people kind of popping in there and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, so there's the live feeds, there's the, you know, all of this stuff that, a lot of people aren't going to be privy to. Um, so Patreon's pretty cool. A pretty cool little website, that's for sure. Nice. So we've got that going on. Now, do you also have a podcast? I do. It's so <laughs> stupid, man. Like, <laughs> you know, it's what so don't stupid. you do, man? What don't uh, you do? I know. I don't cook, and I'm really terrible at laundry. Um, but like, um, so it's called, the, it's called the Ectoplasm Show, um, which I uh, was more or less... I was talked into doing it. Uh, I didn't want to ever do podcasting or anything like that. And I actually, uh, one of my majors uh, in college when I first started uh, was radio broadcasting. Um, and so I just, I was like, eh, I'm over it. I don't want to do it, whatever. And um, he talked me into doing it. And now here we are 315 episodes in. So I'm like, good Lord, man, like, I just can't stop, you know, like, what am I doing? Uh, but with that, you know, we, we interview guests and so we talk uh, some current event type of things going on with uh, everything from conspiracy theory to ufology and cryptozoology and anything that's weird, we can get our grubby little paws on. Yeah. And, and the reason I bring all this up it's 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 a courtesy to you, and, and I want people to know what you're doing and and promote what you've got going on. But also at the same time, they can connect with really interesting, well produced um, information. And I, I I use the word entertainment. Oh, thank you. Man. Well, and and I also use yeah. the word entertainment, and I don't mean that like you know like a song and oh, dance. No. And but I mean it's like it entertains your mind. It it, it makes you think about things. And I, and I I appreciate the thoughtfulness that you put behind these things. Now you and I met originally uh at the uh, inaugural hauntacon omaha yes. which i want to promote real quick because um jamie here in omaha puts this thing on and if you're anywhere close to omaha oh um, yeah you, you got to come to this thing in 2020 it's gonna be held on saturday april 4th i don't know um josh you, you, i don't know if you're presenting at it or, or anything like that it might be too early to say but, I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm presenting it or not. <laughs> well, we have the first one was held in an abandoned slaughterhouse at the stockyards, and yeah. I think she had a permit for three or four hundred tickets. Well, don't tell yeah. the fire marshal, but she sold over five hundred. The second one was at the Amazing. famous uh, Sokol Auditorium that had over eight hundred attend. So yeah. she, she's building something here, and the reason I bring that up is that we're primarily a, a horror movie and kind of dark entertainment, funny kind of podcast, but we also go into the, uh, also kind of veer off the path and go down the paranormal cryptozoology, kind of the interesting stuff, the real, yeah. it's funny to say real life, but it's kind of those situations that inspire the horror movies. Um, Absolutely. So if you're anywhere near the Midwest of Omaha, Nebraska, you need to come down to Hauntacon and uh, experience all this craziness that happens around here. And I'm sure Jamie will love me plugging that event. And it's such a fun event anyway. It's like, man, you get to meet some really cool people, say hi to old friends, you know, all that fun stuff. It's yeah. great. Uh, also, I want to promote an event that I'm going to be attending at the Malvern Manor. I know, I think tickets are sold out. Tickets I might, think so. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm going to be there. I'm really excited about this, um, October 19th event, uh, Dude, kind of an overnight yes. investigation. Now you got some heavy hitters. You got Mr. Hauser yeah. coming down and then, absolutely. and then, uh, Elizabeth Saint is coming down yes. for this. And what I'm excited about this is that she has with Nick Groff, formerly, of uh, ghost adventures. Most people will know him from there. But yeah. she's, she's got this, um, and I think you're involved with it too. Can you talk a little bit about her? What do you know about Vidi Space? So yeah, Vidi Space man is a a network like for everybody. It's kind of you know it's I, I call it Netflix for nerds. You know, um, 
any interest that you have, there's, you know, Vidi spaces, Vidi space contains all of these other spaces. You have the music space, you have the horror space, you have the documentary space, you know, you have the haunted space, all of this stuff that you can uh, go and, and look at, at, um, there's shows, um, there are films, there are podcasts. <laughs> it is outstanding stuff. Um, but yeah, it was all started uh, by, by Nick, uh, Nick Groff and Elizabeth Saint. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, you know, I, I submitted the first A Brush With Evil film to them, not really expecting much, um, but within five hours, they had emailed, emailed me back and they were like, we want it. I was like, okay. I'm like, well, hold on tight because I got a few more here. So I like just throwing everything that I can at them. Hey, you want some podcasts? I got about 10 books. I got 15 movies. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> right. Hey, look at this. Look at this. Here's another one. Right. Um, but you know, they were nice enough to, uh, to, you know, hear me out and look at my stuff, you know, and just give me the time of day. Um, and that was really why they wanted to start you know, Vidi space is the fact that there are a lot of cool, you know, like documentary filmmakers, for example, that are out there and they're making really cool films and really good content. And they don't have a platform to stand on. Um, and it's really, really hard uh, to get that. And they just gave us the platform. And they're like, here, this is, this is home for you now, you know? Um, and this is a place where uh, people like Elizabeth and Nick are also going to be you know, plugging your stuff and, and putting it out there for the masses to see. If it wasn't for Nick and Elizabeth, in all honesty, my stuff wouldn't be on, on Amazon. That was all them. They were the ones that did all of this stuff. So I will forever be thankful uh, for those guys, for sure. Yeah, it's an exciting time because if you're looking for content like that, there's never been a better time to go find that content. And it's it's uh, readily available. It's it's uh, produced with high quality. And, uh, yeah, it's just exciting. It's an exciting time for, for those that, uh, you know, and it's not even – I'm just talking like with in the realm of technology. It's just really cool right. that, that like information can be shared. Uh, it, it's just it's 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 just incredible, and I and I really it fascinates me. The reason I brought it up is because I'm really excited to to um, go and be a part of this uh, thing at Malvern Manor on October 19th. But, I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be huge. Uh, but it's just it's just um, it's just an interesting time to be alive, you know, with all this, uh, with, yes. all, with, all this yes. with all this it information is. you can share and how to connect and network with people and it's a lot. It's crazy, man. And so they just added also. Um, so I know like Sharla Harden's going to be there as well. Um, Johnny Hauser, as we mentioned, but they just added Ashley Godwin, who was also on Ghost Hunters International. Wow. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, a lot of cool stuff going on on the on the 19th, man. Like, I'm stoked about it. A lot of cool stuff. That kind of sums up the conversation and everything that we've had here with, uh, <laughs> with Josh Hurd. Now, Josh, also, you're a musician. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> it doesn't stop. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so you do a lot of music around uh, the Midwest, right? Yeah, like... Uh, we play um, around the Omaha area a lot. Um, and it's usually like Friday nights, um, like f what we call like the Friday after work shows, you know? Nice. Um, and it's usually like, we'll usually start around seven or eight o'clock, um, play till about midnight or so. Uh, but it's just me and one other guy and he plays percussion and sings. I play guitar and sing. Um, and we play some very odd things that you'll probably never hear anybody with an acoustic guitar play. <laughs> but like, um, you know, everything from, from Garth Brooks to Tool, you know, <laughs> we will cover literally everything, the whole gamut. We're nice. in a very eclectic taste of music. So. so it's a lot of fun. But we're called JB Acoustic because his name's Brad. Um, so JB Acoustic because we're quite original. When it comes to things like that, <laughs> well, it's better than BJ acoustic, I guess. It, it hey, almost it hey. almost was, brother. It almost <laughs> was, 
for I, just a moment. I can't. Me and I my, can. uh, oh, no, I went there uh, because <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> my, my sophomoric mentality yeah. really took, took over there for a second. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, this would be great. <laughs> yeah, how old am I? Yeah. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> cool, man. We've had the opportunity to speak here tonight with Josh Hurd, and we've talked about the Malvern Manor. We've talked about the paranormal. We've talked a little bit about cryptozoology and and, and just the, the crazy darkness that's out there in our world, and it's been a lot of fun. And Josh, thank you so much for being on the program. Brian, thank you so much, brother. Any too, man. A- Any time, and I'm, I'm really excited to see you guys soon. Uh, on behalf of our co-hosts, Wayne, Lori, Zip, and Doug, this is Brian. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Necronomicast. You've been listening to the Necronomicast, a podcast hosted by a bunch of blood bags and produced by Brian Corey and Wayne Brecky. For show notes and other interesting information, go to the show page at necronomicast.com. And until next time, find something better to do with your time.